first, what's a system? A system is a whole, spelled with a W, that consists of parts, each of which can affect its behavior or its properties. You, for example, are a biological system called an organism, and you consist of parts, your heart, your lungs, your stomach, pancreas, and so on, each of which can affect your behavior or your properties. The second requirement is that each part of the system, when it affects the system, is dependent for its effect on some other part. In other words, the parts are interdependent. No part of a system or collection of parts of a system has an independent effect on it. Therefore, the way the heart affects you depends on what the lungs are doing and the brain is doing. The parts are all interconnected. And therefore, a system is a whole that cannot be divided into independent parts. Now, that has some very, very important implications that are generally overlooked. First, the essential or defining properties of any system are properties of the whole which none of its parts have. For example, a very elementary system you are familiar with is an automobile. The essential property of an automobile is it can carry you from one place to another. No part of an automobile can do that. The wheel can't, the axle can't, the seat can't, the motor can't. The motor can't even carry itself from one place to another. But the automobile can. You have certain characteristics, the most important of which is life. None of your parts live. You have life. You can write. Your hand can't write. That's easy to demonstrate. Cut it off and put it on the table and watch what it does. <laughs> Nothing. You can see. Your eye can't see. You can think. Your brain can't think. And therefore, when a system is taken apart, it loses its essential properties. If I bring an automobile into this room and disassemble it, although every single part's in this room, I don't have an automobile. Because the system is not the sum of the behavior of its parts, it's a product of their interactions. And that's been said here in many ways over and over today. Now, what does that mean? If we have a system of improvement that's directed at improving the parts taken separately, you can be absolutely sure that the performance of the whole will not be improved. And that can be rigorously proven. But most applications of improvement programs are directed at improving the parts taken separately, not the whole. ein bisschen befürchten, dass inzwischen die Leute also sich nicht mehr in die Augen sehen, sondern vor sich auf so ein Tablett klotzen und selbst in der, über die Straße gehen. Was wir brauchen, ist ein wirklich fundamentales Umdenken. Nicht nur im Design, generell. generell. Zum einen zurück. Weniger und besser.
there's a lot of interest these days in kind of the role that design can play in um, helping either organizations kind of address some of the big thorny challenges that they're facing as they try and evolve and adapt to a very um, diverse world where um, consumer needs and consumer engagement and the channels with which conversations happen is you know, multiplying rapidly. And I think both um, within the design community and outside, you know, to also see how design can impact much bigger kind of social problems. It's easy for that discussion to get kind of um, reduced to some, some very sort of specific notions of what design is. Right now, um, where a lot of that's happening is around the term design thinking. There's a core idea uh, behind that term, which is that design can change the way you think about problems. And I think that that's true, that part of the role that designers can play is to, to kind of help participants and collaborators within an organization or, or across a, a, you know, a broader initiative to believe in alternate approaches and alternate ways of looking at a problem and alternate ways of breaking it down. And so I think design can help support different ways of thinking. And designers are very um, willing and practiced at sort of following some of those different um, uh, channels of thought in a way that other participants might be hesitant. And I think a lot of it is the confidence to push through. That idea has gotten fetishized a bit. The notion that it's simply a matter of getting people to think differently and getting people in a room together to discuss ideas differently and that there are some simple levers that can disrupt and change the whole dynamic of a problem or an organization just through thought exercises. And I think that's the challenge with the term. Design thinking is mostly about design doing. You know, most of what we bring that I think shifts the way people approach problems, whether it's in a business or outside, is by doing different things, not thinking different things, and by testing ideas through doing. And I think that's probably the most fundamental element of design thinking is how you test ideas by doing. What we're finding today is that people have latched onto that idea and there's been a, a huge kind of wave of efforts to um, bring designers and other participants in these, some of these big social impact issues together for these short, sort of rich collaborative sessions. And um, you know, I think that the results of those are often disappointing. And I think it comes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is these problems require a great deal of commitment and a high degree of collaboration to follow through on. And the challenge is not thinking up ideas. The challenge is in the way you apply them and evolve them. And not just evolve them to make them better ideas, but evolve them through the collaboration and commitment of the people and the communities that are going to be engaged in, 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 in making changes. In this area, particularly around social innovation, I find again and again that when I run workshops, design thinking workshops, with entrepreneurs who are really trying to um, come up with new models, I find that they're consistently the most creative and fearless people in the conversation. And they put the designers to shame in many cases. We do have ways of shifting thinking and remixing ideas that are very valuable tools for them. But at a fundamental level, a lot of the people that I feel like I meet and work with, like Kristen Zinni, are incredibly creative in the way they think about the problems they're working with, incredibly willing to shift their tack and try out new solutions, and very focused on how to make those solutions as tangible and meaningful and actively engage people in them as quickly as possible, because they've got no time. And they've got very little resources compared to the problems they're dealing with.